Okay, there we go. Now we're recording. Okay, and you haven't made me host yet, so don't forget to do that. I'll do that before I hop off. Okay, thanks. Welcome, everyone. Today is the um, March 7th meeting of the Joint Capital Planning Committee, JCPC, and seeing that we have a quorum, I am going to call the meeting to order, and the first thing I need to do is make sure that the members of the committee can hear and we can hear you. So I'm just going to call on you as I see you on the screen. Um, Jean? Yes. Bob? Yes. Anna? Present. Lee? Yep. Yeah. Sarah? Yep. Yeah. Jennifer. And Jennifer was here but said she needed to step out briefly. Um, so we'll wait to confirm. She could hear when she was stepping out. <laughs> Um, at Jean has very graciously, while we were in the practice station, offered to be the minute taker for today. So we have a minute taker. Um, and thank you for volunteering. Hopefully we we'll only have one. And as I had said in my note to everyone, Athena gets us the Zoom pretty quickly so that you can take as much or little notes as you need during the meeting, but you'll have the Zoom meeting also to fill them in. So um, I think, you know, the agenda for today, the, the first part of it is the big picture overview of um, with what was posted on the web page for the committee is a very long list of projects um, with a total at the bottom. And then also a description of all of those. But my understanding is we're going to first have a presentation of about all of this. And then we have several individual projects. And we will start with the two from resident. Re, we have two resident proposals. And I see one of the people is here. Um, hopefully the other person will be oh, here. The other person both have joined. So after Sandy, I'm going to turn it over to you and your team, however you want to do the presentation. And then the next will be Jeremy and Janet, and then we'll go to their uh, series of school proposals. Um, so, you know, I'm assuming Athena has sent out notices. So Doug knows roughly when to join us. So with that really short inter introduction, I'm welcoming Sandy um, to tell us, to give us the bigger picture or overview, which as people may have noticed if, if you weren't on JCPC before, or if you were over the last couple of years, what we received is different than what we've received in the past in terms of um, the document. So I think we definitely need you to walk us through the work before us, Sandy. Very good. Um, thank you very much. Uh, nice to see everybody. Um, what I'm going to do first is give a little bit of background and then just do sort of a quick run through of the numbers um, and um, see what questions people have. Uh, I think the most important thing is that because things started a little bit later this year, um, you don't have the same presentation that you had in the past. In the past, when um, Sean Mangano was here and Paul Bockelman was acting as uh, was town manager, together they had a system in which they presented a plan that was pretty close to being in balance right from the start. They picked the things that they thought were um, their priorities, um, they did some work with determining what would be borrowed versus what would be paid for in cash. And um, they put that together in a, a nice, neat packet that explained the role of the uh, JCPC that um, laid out all the projects with short little descriptions and um, had a balanced summary. Um, that is both not something that we were able to get done this year so far. Um, there's a lot going on. Um, and because um, the uh, it's just a little bit different from how I had done things. Uh, the way that I had always done things with JCPC was to give you the full list of everything. Um, so you can see sort of the scope of what's going on. 
And then um, as we work through things to try to help the committee by making some suggestions about things that could uh, either be borrowed or maybe different sources or, um, uh, or just maybe needed to be put off. So we're sort of in that second stage at this point. What you have received to date is a list of all of the forms that the departments put forward with individual uh, descriptions of individual projects. Uh, Jenna, Jen LaFontan has put that in order of departments. It's a giant PDF, but you can see it's order of departments and their page numbers. So as we look at different departments um, projects, uh, we can just go through them in that order. Uh, what I am just gonna share with the group right at the moment is um, the numbers. And let's see. There we go. Let's make this a little bigger. How's that? All right. So um, this is a list of all the projects. Uh, FY25 is highlighted a little bit. Um, what I've hidden from what you've maybe seen in the past is suggested sources like cash or borrowing. I have not made any effort at this point in the process uh, to go through that. We have, um, we also had a little bit of a problem in the beginning of this process in that when the staff was first collecting information from departments about their request, all the departments sent back, or many of the departments just sent back the FY25 requests. And there was no information about ongoing requests. So for example, uh, I don't know if this was the case with IT, but what an example would be that a department like IT would have given back just the $200,000 for FY25 and we wouldn't have known what the needs were in the, in the future years. So that has also taken a little bit of time to go back to the department and get that. I think we have done a pretty good job. There are a couple who I would say are maybe not as quick as other departments. So uh, they uh, there are a couple of things that we still need to get, but the departments that are presenting today have gotten back to us and we will have that information for you as we go forward. Um, I would say, I think the, I, I'm not gonna go through this whole list. Um, I would just, I'll scroll through it a little bit just so you kind of get a sense of what's out there um, and um, kind of numbers we're talking about. Uh, we have the school department who's gonna be here today and talking about the specifics of their request. So in particular, I'll let Doug go through that. Um, I'm just gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and say that at this point, we have $10 million in requests for FY25, um, six and a half for the next year, 34 and a half back out in 27, uh, and then nine and five. So there's $65 million worth of requests. Uh, we usually spend, I forget what the number is, six or $7 million a year, I think in capital, just off the top of my head. So there are clearly more projects listed here uh, than we have money for. One of the reasons that that is, is that there's some projects like, for example, the public works building at $28 million is in there at its full amount. Um, and in the future, when we decide what's gonna be borrowed versus what we'll pay cash for, that number will spread out over multiple years. Um, so right now it's just a, uh, a list of everything that uh, in their full cost all at once in the year in which we will spend it. And typically we do present things in both fashions. What we're gonna spend in the given year, such as $28 million on DPW and FY27, and then a sort of cash flow showing that over the next 20 or 30 years, we're gonna be repaying bonds on that. Uh, so, uh, one is like you get a new credit card and the other is a series of credit card bills. Um, with that, I would say um, it is my intention to continue to follow up on this and to give you a, an updated sheet 
that shows really how we are in balance and to start to make some suggestions. Both Paul Bachman and I have started sitting down uh, to go through this list and um, we will continue to do that early next week. And I'm hoping by our next meeting to have something a little more comprehensive showing um, the, the cash flow for these different projects. Uh, we're also working with our uh, financial advisor who helps the town with our bonding and getting a sense from him um, of what the costs are likely to be for the things that we're going to, the bonds we're selling in FY25 this spring, which will then have to be paid off starting in FY26 uh, and some of the other um, potential bonding costs going forward. Uh, so that's really uh, mostly what I have to say at this point. And um, I would be glad to engage in any conversation, answer any questions or uh, share anybody's feelings about the process. So I'm, I'll, as chair, I'm gonna call on other people before myself. So Bob, your hand went up and then I see Sarah's hand is up also. Yeah, I, I have some questions. I'm, I'm new to the committee, so maybe this is a naive question. But what I didn't see in this chart uh, or in this spreadsheet is all of the buildings, the four major capital buildings, plus the, the high school track borrowing, you know, paying off the high school track, or at least there should be something in there for that. I didn't see those. I'm wondering why we don't have them in there. Um, the other thing is in looking through the actual individual project list, there was a, a request for police cruisers. I think it was 320K and I don't see it in this spreadsheet. So I don't know whether that was just inadvertently left out or uh, or what. So um, I have some other questions about. Um, if you could hold them off so that I remember all the questions. No, no, no. The, 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 first, the biggest issue is, you know, why we should have all of the major capital projects in here, even if we're going to borrow money or we're using the debt authorization, the debt exclusion for the, the, the new elementary school. Uh, but I think it should be in here. Um, sure. And... Okay. So some of the projects have previously been approved uh, by town, uh, so that they don't they don't need to be in the project as requests because they've already been voted by the council. So what you will see in the backup material that will come with this is what the uh, the debt payments on those are gonna be. So for example, the library isn't listed. We are gonna borrow for the town's portion of the library. We're gonna sell a bond for them in May um, for about $15 million. And what you will then see in some of the subsequent documents that I will get to you is a list of what the payments, it, initially what the uh, estimated payments are. And then uh, at some point we may even, depending on when the sale is, have what the actual payments are gonna be. Uh, so that one isn't there. Something like DPW, which still hasn't been approved is on the list because it still needs to be approved. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that deals with the, the four different projects. Some have been approved already and some are, still need to approve DPW and fire. A school and the library uh, have already been approved. Mm -hmm. You asked about the track. Um, Somebody else may know this better than I do. I believe what's going on with the track is that the school department, uh, school committee has revoted an authorization for the track and changed the term somewhat. Um, I, I, and I don't know all the particulars. I think it had to do with the type of surface that they were going to use, whether it was going to be turf or not. Um, and so that um, authorization, uh, I think, is before the council at this moment. And um, so once we know, uh, once that gets authorized, we'll then have some numbers to be able to put in there. But I, I am guessing that it had been approved at some point in the past and now is being modified. Right. 1.5 million was approved in the past. Yeah. And it's being modified. Yep. And then um, I think there was one other, oh, the vehicles, the police yeah. vehicles. So within this, all the requests from departments are listed by departments except vehicles. 
Right. There's a separate section at the bottom that has vehicles. Right now, um, there are uh, there's listed three hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year for each of the five years of the plan, uh, assuming that hybrid vehicles plus the assorted equipment, lights, and so forth, are going to come to about ninety thousand um, dollars. When the police are here, they will explain that in the past. We bought four vehicles one year and then three, 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 and then four again. But um, from what I learned yesterday afternoon, uh, for a couple of years, uh, the police department wasn't able to keep to that uh, schedule. So they are now asking for more than they have usually gotten to try to get back and, and keep them up to, to speed. That's an, uh, That's one of those issues that Certainly, Paul and I will continue to have some conversations with the police chief about what the department's needs are, because that's been a recently evolving number. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, OK, thank you. I just don't want to forget those things. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. They're big ticket items. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Sarah? Yeah, one one small and one maybe a, a little less small, but having to do with that spreadsheet, all the requests, and it was yeah. uh, this year's requests total ten million and change, and then there was a number below that that wasn't labeled seven million. Is that that what's available? Is that oh, how, what, uh, what was that number? So that's what I showed you on the screen, um, yeah. which is. I will say different from what we passed out, when we passed something out, it didn't include that line. Right. <laughs> because that's kind of an internal working line. I think it is a measure of the cash versus bonded request, but I can't swear to it because it's something that Sean had put in that spreadsheet and I'm still trying to figure out everything that's in the spreadsheet. So it doesn't mean any, shouldn't mean anything to us at the moment. Exactly. All right. My other question, if I can, about you, you said earlier that departments had not gotten you information on out years, but I thought you we always have a five year plan. So what is it that you needed? Was it updates like if they've changed their. Um, when their you were initially asked before I came on to work for the town, they were asked in a way that some of them, I think, particularly some of the new department heads did not know or have explained to them that they needed to do five years. So they did just one year. Then as we started to review those numbers, it became apparent, wait a minute, there are some numbers missing. So we've gone back to, and uh, <laughs> Jennifer has done a really good job of following up with most of those departments to get those numbers. There are still one or two stragglers. Again, they tend to be some of the newer department heads for whom the whole process is new. And um, so I'd say by the next time we meet, we should have all those numbers together and be able to report the full spectrum. Um, Doug, I see your hand is up. So I'm going to call on you before I go. So I have yeah, a... I'm just going to clarify Bob's question. You know, he asked about the the, the track uh, authorization. So that debt is actually, um, and that bond would be would be carried by the regional school district. So it won't show up on this at all other than the payments. So when the regional schools borrow money, um, we make a, you know, that debt is assessed to the to the town, and that'll show up as a line on this on this JCPC as a single line for all the regional school debt, which includes projects from the past and and uh, and a variety of different things, and it's sort of a, a blended number there. So, just want to clarify that. Thanks. Yeah, I meant I meant to say I was I was only looking for Amherst share of of that. Um, obviously, the other towns share isn't relevant to us. So I'm gonna follow with a a larger picture question, um, but then also talk about the debt. Um, what we received last few times that was extremely helpful is what you started to say, Sandy, is how much money do we have? And yeah. one of the things that we saw, and so I'll just give, as of last year, what we thought we would have in FY25, we thought we would have about $8.9 million, okay. but of that 2.9, so call it three, was already being spent for current, for debt that was incurred. So in terms of money we could look at with this new set, 
it was five million. Um, it was around five with the road money that we get. You know, so I think that would be really helpful for us to get that because when I saw 10 million, I go, well, I think it's two to three times more. Mm -hmm. Even if I said some of this would be bonds or some, but just a sense yeah. of we yes. have much to spend this much is already spoken you know we we it comes out of the capital budget the things we obligated ourselves to before um yes. and it's just helpful to to have that context that this is not a small adjustment that we're going to be going through but a fairly large you know being tough on this list of projects so sure yes and uh, that is something i very much am hoping i can decipher the 10 page spreadsheet that Sean had with different tabs and links. Um, I'm getting there, I'm cross-referencing. I just couldn't get it done today. No, that's fine. And what I can do to everyone is I can excerpt, it was page six in last year's um, five-year plan that gave you the top and the bottom. So you could see what we thought we would have in 25, 26, 27, 28. And, and then the other thing that I thought was really helpful that we had, um, and I'm going to hold up this <laughs> tiny little piece, but it was the last page in that document. And it was what Bob has been asking about the 10 year debt schedule, yes. that all the things that we already said we were going to do. And so that added up to that. What I just quickly said is $3 million of debt service. And it showed some things are going off, but the regional track was in there. And as Doug said, it didn't show up as track. It took as our share of the regional capital assessment. So, it, but you could see it sitting there um, and you could see Jones library sitting there and you could see the, the guesstimate for the public works department spread over, you know, so it had already in place and um, yet to come that we were looking at, you know, to have a sense of what was obligated. I just I found that document extremely helpful um, to realize that when we say, oh, we'll just buy this with debt to realize what that does to the next year. Um, yes, yes. And the other thing that I thought was useful when we get to particularly, well, police, you said vehicles, is we had this inventory that had been built up of yes. how many trucks do we have? How many police cars do we have? How old is each one? What is the mileage? It was an inventory yep. that also enabled us to say, mm, here's a request for another, but it looks like maybe there are enough, maybe, you know, can you get one more year out of that one? Um, so that was just a useful context document to have when we're looking at requests for new vehicles. Um, yes. So uh, we will get you that. Uh, you will also have an inventory of all the buildings in town. So you, everybody knows, you know, what assets uh, we have. Um, and um, at some point, I will report to you what the status of previously approved projects is. But um, that was that's been in the packet in the past too. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just looking at the table of contents from last year's preliminary report uh, and the things that had been delivered to the committee, uh, which, as I said, I would have liked to have had to you earlier, but uh, it's been a compressed schedule no, at this point. And, no, and I just said, you know, it's we realize it's not going to be exact, but it was helpful. To, you know, mm -hmm. it's not like this year we're going to have 10 million more than we thought we were going to have. You know, the, the world unfortunately does, you know, so so yeah, what, I, what I'll make sure everyone has, I can just excerpt and send them the two pages I've talked about because the debt schedule of existing debt won't have changed. You know, it's the ones we'd already purchased, the ladder truck or what, whatever. Right. But um, so, so it feels like we're going to have, um, let, how would I say this, more work to do this year <laughs> than we had last year where the staff had already made some hard decisions before it came to us. So J Jennifer, you, I know you're, you're back, but you were making, didn't it come to us nearly balanced this year? We have the full list before the cut, before the adjustments have been made to get down. 
Um, so, so I just think it's important that we keep that in mind as we start to hear proposals. Um, Sarah. Uh, is our CPAC project separately tracked? They have their own revenue, but if they're, they're bar if there's borrowing, then yeah, they're they're tracked in two ways, um, and that will be helpful. You can see it when you get the bigger list. You can see that this is a CPAC project and expense, but there's CPAC money that's paying for it, so it's not off of the general fund. Um, but it affects our borrowing it, limit. The town's borrowing limit, no? Yeah, and so it, it's no. sitting there. And so you can see um, the CPAC rolling green affordable housing. Well, I'm looking at this this debt yeah. list that I have. It's all there, but then it's part of the um, amazing thing that this town does that they know there's revenue to pay that debt. So it, it doesn't end up as coming off of this year's allocation of the general fund. It's so being, it, it right, but we it's do not have a part of that 10.05% right. that we're spending on capital. It's over and above that. I understand, but we do have a, the town does have a borrowing limit, so it must count towards that. That's that that's true. I will say we will never get anywhere close to that limit. Oh. It's 5% okay. of our um basically 5% of the total value of all property in town and um nobody gets anywhere close to it. And don't get any wild ideas now. No, oh, and, it, and, we're, ahead, say, and the school doesn't count. The, there's a nice, you know, like we don't have to count the school. It's got its own category for whatever reasons on this. Yeah. For... It, it, it does go back to the credit cards. Yes, the borrowing limit is high, so you can get a lot of credit cards. The problem is you have to pay them off, and that's the constraint. So I think, if, if are there any other questions? Because so just so everyone understands what what my understanding is, we have the this year list. If everything came through without any designation, this is cash or debt. Because a cup there was one a one point nine million one, and usually when it's that big, we spread it out. Um, we've got a, a list that totals to a lot more than the money we're going to have to spend. And uh, we will be getting more sort of big picture information next week, but we're going to be starting with the department's requests. And I guess the first today is schools and we have the two resident requests. And what we typically do is we raise questions about the requests, um, ask the people who are presenting, and then to the extent those are answerable, um, Sandy and the town staff has gotten back to us with answers if we didn't get couldn't get answers right during the day. So we don't have to make decisions while we're hearing the presentations. We just are going through our our larger thinking hats on what we've heard. So are people neat ready with that introduction to move to the next part of the agenda? So I see we've got, um, we've got, uh, did Janet McGowan leave? No, she's there. She's still, here. She's still yeah, on. She's here. Janet's here. Okay, so we have two resident requests and I think Athena had listed them as next on the agenda and then you, you Doug. So um, if Jeremy, if you could speak to your request and keep the presentation really short because we we all got the documents, so then we can ask questions about it. And then Janet, you would follow Jeremy. And tell us who you are when, hi, Jeremy. <laughs> hi, uh, on that note, uh, Jeremy Anderson, 34 High Point Drive. Uh, and, and thank you so much for, for you know hearing my request and, and for helping me with the submission process. Um, I, I'm really uh, passionate about trying to make our, our streets safer for our kids. Uh, and and for everyone who lives in our community, and I, I think, you know, it's it's in the news that it, I sent in the document that I submitted. Almost every every day, it feels like there's another article about how unsafe the streets are becoming in in our in our state uh, and across our country. Just two days ago in the Gazette, the the title was was you know we're in a state of crisis in in Massachusetts, and that was from the director of the Department of Transportation, where people are just 
everyone's trying to make up for lost time from COVID and trying to do too many things and just driving too fast. And, and that puts our kids especially at risk. Kids just, they don't have traffic awareness. And we live in this beautiful community where there's so many things you can do. You can go to parks, you can go to see music, you can go to museums and great schools, and but all of that requires driving. And so every time that we go someplace to bring our kids to soccer practice, to go grocery shopping, we're getting in our cars and we're potentially creating conflicts. And one simple and, and just very mechanical solution are, are these your speed signs. Uh, they, they flash and they, they have wonderful results. Uh, the director, the, the president of the, or forget the titles here, but the Transportation Advisory Committee, she was saying that the new studies show that they, they have a lasting effect. It's not something you can even shut them off and just having them there will slow people down. So a simple thing we can do to keep our kids safe at all the public schools is to put up your speed signs that remind drivers that they're just, they're going too fast and it's time to slow down and just take take life a little bit easier. <laughs> uh, and so that's that's the first request. We have, um, I asked for for 10 signs, each sign for about $5,000 for the full $50,000 um, that there was, was you know, available. And these are available from multiple vendors. And then the other request was to add a school zone posting at the high school and at the middle school. Uh, high schools were just added recently under DOT guidelines as schools, uh, according to traffic studies. Um, so it, it seems appropriate to me that we post the, them, you know, to keep our kids safe, even high school kids need to be safe as well. So thank you so much for, for the opportunity and happy for any questions. Um, so I see uh, both Sarah and Bob. Sarah, I think your hand went up first. <laughs> um, so 10 signs. I'm curious why 10, unless it's the number of schools and one each way. But I think you also said that the signs are effective if they're just moved around or even if they're off. So why not five signs and just keep moving, <laughs> keep moving. Yeah, so um, what I've been told is that it's the permanent signs that are effective. Uh, people know that trailers are are, are moved around and um, I've been trying to help out or with, with traffic on Henry Street and, and the police department was wonderful and provided a, a trailer, uh, you know, and, and while the trailer was there, speed went right down. And as soon as the trailer was gone, oh. it came right back again. So they do need to be permanent signs, and and yes, it was it was two for each of the public schools, one in each direction, except for Crocker Farm, which has actually two two roads that parallel it. Uh, so it would need extra signs. Can I just add that in a couple of years we'll only have four schools? Oh well, in that case, then it could be moved. You know, I mean, it would be a permanent sign, but I was hoping <laughs> that they could be moved to another neighborhood or to another part in town. You know, we've been putting them up in downtown and it, it needs to be there too. It needs to be next to our playgrounds and our parks. But, you know, I think starting with the schools, keeping our kids safe is, is a great way to start. Thank you. Bob? Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, Jeremy, you, you answered this. I didn't see it in your, your capital request, but uh, Crocker Farms, I mean, people, that's part of that uh, is in my, uh, is in my district. And I, I talked to a couple of residents on Shea Street who were concerned about how fast the traffic was there. And so you definitely need signs on Shea Street as well as West Street. So, no, I, and I would think that would, you know, only be appropriate. But yeah. But I, I think it's a great idea. Hmm. Jennifer. Jeremy's and Janet's requests basically for the same thing. And does it make sense to talk about both of them? I don't think Janet's is specifically for schools. It's for a specific road. Janet, correct me if I'm wrong. Whereas Jeremy's is there for the similar signs, but it, for different reasons. Yeah, I didn't know about Jeremy's request, which I hardly support. So um, Jennifer, you're right. I mean, in that they're asking and Janet's was, for those who read it was more specific that these come and they can be solar powered, but both of them, I I double checked on the web, and these price these price ranges were are of course correct. I mean, you both did a little work before you submitted it, you know, but it's in the four to five thousand dollars. They're they're each. Um, 
So I guess my question, and I see Anna's hand is going up, but um, one of the issues, as Jeremy knows full well, is uh, proposals come to us from residents and there's other staff departments in town that it would be good for them to have said, this is a great idea and we completely support it. It sounds like you have talked to the police department about this. Um, I don't know whether both of you in their piece and did, did did you ask if they would um, send us anything that would say we think this is a good idea, you know, and because it didn't come in as requests from them and it didn't come in as requests from DPW. So that's just my general, you know, going through um, the departments where it could have come in as a capital request from them. Um, and so I'll stop with that. It's, it, it's, it's not a do or die, but it's useful when we get the hands on. This is a good idea. Yeah. Um, sorry, it, I I did reach out uh, first uh, to to uh, Captain Ting, uh, who has been incredibly supportive of traffic concerns across across the town, and he was very supportive of me submitting this uh, proposal, and he has been you know, very supportive of the work uh, throughout town that that we've been involved in. So. Um, I, I don't know if that counts as an official endorsement, uh, but he was supportive of it when I consulted with him. Uh, I reached out to the superintendent of the DPW or the Public Works Department. Um, he wanted to clarify that this was coming in as a residence request because they had their own uh, public works requests that were that were going to be submitted. And I also reached out to the Transportation Advisory Committee. Uh, they weren't able to meet prior to this to give an official endorsement, but the president or the chair of the committee, uh, Tracy, what was very supportive of this as well. Again, it's not officially endorsed by anyone, but there were communications that said this were positive um, and, and in, different from capital requests coming from either the police or from uh, public works. So, okay. so Janet, you, you, you can go into yours. And I see also that Anna has her hand up. Anna, do you want start, I do. Sorry. I'm so sorry, Janet. I just, I, I, I want to make a really important differentiation between Jeremy and Janet's requests, if that's okay. And that's, that's why I raised my hand and why I don't think we should consider them at the same time. Um, and, and the reason it, Janet, is that okay? Can I, can I, no, I'm, I'm actually a little confused about when I should go. So this is helpful. So, so what Jeremy, the reason why I think it's important to differentiate the two is, um, Janet's request is for a specific street, a specific spot where speeding has been observed. Jeremy's is specifically for schools um, and all streets in that have that school zone um, in them. So I think that the the difference here is I know that Jeremy has also been undergoing I am what I understand is a very frustrating process to work with the town on getting, you know, speed um, traffic calming measures at a at a non Amherst school area in town. And I think that it's it's really different to me to say we should have speed signs at schools versus we should have speed signs in this for this specific space because I have noticed speeding there. That's not to say that shouldn't happen as well, but I think we need to consider them differently um, because there's, I know that TSO has it on their docket to talk about a process for the latter for uh, how we do traffic calming throughout town with resident requests. Um, and that's not what my understanding of in reading Jeremy's application is that's not what he's asking for. He's asking for this at all school zone areas. Um, so that's that's my rationale for I, I think I would rather like make sure we've wrapped up questions for Jeremy and then go to Janet's because I don't think that they're the same proposal and I don't want to conflate the two. Okay, so so let's take it that way. And Janet, then you then you will have the floor. So d does anyone have any other questions of Jeremy? I don't see any, well, so, okay, go, go Sarah. Well, I have a question about the proposal, but it, it's not necessarily for Jeremy and you can tell me, we'll talk about it later, but is the installation cost part of the capital request? I mean, I'm sure, you know, the electric, electricity, if it needs that, you know, that's just going to be in a, somebody's operating budget, but um, yeah, I'm, my question is about installation. Yeah, thanks. That's a great question. Um, I, I don't know what installation costs would be, uh, and and I would was hoping to get that information from the Public Works Department. Uh, the the items that I I found, um, you know, from just a, a Granger was the supplier that I looked at. 
they were solar powered. Um, so, you know, the, the, you know, hopefully there wouldn't be a continued operation cost uh, to them and also have a lower environmental impact. Um, but I, I've, from talking with the town engineer, Jason Skills, and, and from the superintendent of public works, uh, the town has its own suppliers for these as well. So hopefully, you know, this is what I found through a Google search. Hopefully the town has more sophisticated ways uh, of working with suppliers to get the appropriate device at each, you know, for each school. Um, and in the article that was in the Gazette just two days ago, they were saying that DOT, because they've recognized this state of crisis across our state and because schools are, are such a vulnerable place for, for our community, uh, and they also just happen to be a place where people drive too fast. Um, you know, just, it just for whatever reason, like this right past Fort River every day, you know, it's just, it's insane. Um, but there is money from the state as well. So my hope is that we have the money here um, maybe we can leverage that with with funds from the state, but at least this would be a good starting point, and we could start to start to make our schools safer. Sandy, did you have a specific question on on this as well? Well, I was just going to comment a little bit about reaching out to departments, which I can do now, or we can do when we wrap up the presentations. Whatever you would prefer. Let's, let's do Janet first, so that could, that could be more uh, global. So Janet. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you for considering this request. It looks like you have a lot on your plate and, and much bigger ticket items. So I live on Southeast Street and um, Southeast Street is a straight shot from Bay Road to um, Route 9 with no stop signs or any um, traffic lights. And it has chronic speeding, particularly at rush hour, but at all hours of the night. Um, you know, from South Common to Route 9 is, um, there are three blind hills where like, if, as you drive along, you don't really see the oncoming cars. I live right below the third hill, and which is particularly dangerous. Um, drivers seem to want to accelerate as they approach the hill. Um, there's a slight curve that people miss and, you know, kind of jerk their wheel and sort of wind up in people's yards, um, often mine. Um, you know, it's terrible in icy wet conditions. There's no shoulder on the hill. So if you're walking your dog or biking, there's nowhere to go if there's a car coming too close to you. Um, it's been frightening to all the local residents to back out to get your mail. Um, it's frightening to bike over. I have a friend who, you know, grew up in Amherst and said my parents wouldn't let me bike until I was 14 over the hill on Southeast Street. You know, it can be sort of terrifying to stand in your yard and people are going by, you know, really fast. And so there's been a long history of accidents. I've had two particularly serious accidents in our yard. Um, I don't know that this sign would have stopped those people because they were high and drunk. But I do know that the sign that we have, the radar speed sign that is on the side, you know, near, right near my driveway where people are going north has worked. And so you could see people noticeably slow down when they see the sign. And then the next sign they see says 25 miles an hour. It doesn't stop everybody, but it's noticeably worked. And so how did we get that sign? Um, you know, I've led a few insurrections. I have a petition with 70 people that signed a residence. We've met. Um, we were meeting with John Musanti. There was a kind of a small core group, and he was really interested in addressing the traffic safety issues. Um, unfortunately, he died, and we did get us two signs that said 25 miles an hour. And the idea was like, let's try this, let's just keep accelerating. You know, we wanted speed bumps. Um, you know, we I've gone to the TAC five times over the years and they're always in some kind of process to decide how to prioritize president requests. And I, I you know, so that hasn't really worked for us. And so John Musanti died, we got our traffic signs, the whole thing sort of petered out. And one day my husband called up Scott Livingstone and said, you know, can you bring back that, you know, temporary sign? And Scott said, well, I actually have a sign, a permanent sign here. Do you want it? And so Tom said, yes. And then we sort of debated in our household, which side of the hill to put it on. Frankly, it'd be more beneficial if it was on the other side of the hill to us, because the speeders tend to come from route nine and that most affects us. But I also knew that all my friends who live on the hill were more threatened. And so we put the sign, had the sign put in by our driveway that has slowed traffic down. It hasn't really helped people speeding from the other direction, but I, you know, I can slowly get, I can get to my mailbox. 
And so I just saw the the request for you know resident requests, and so I thought I'm going to put it in and see if there's some help here to sort of complete the process. I know you have. I, I think you could put signs in a lot of different spots, but I do know this has been a really difficult hill, and I would love to see a sign come in. And they do work, and that's encouraging to me. Um, I think that's it. I've had eight or 10 cars in our in our yard that have just slipped in. My neighbors, you know, when on snow, I've seen them, people have gone in the ditch and they kind of quietly come out and help people move out of the ditch. Um, we put up a bunch of stones in our yard and that has been very helpful to people. Somehow that means a lot to people when they see they're about to hit something, they get a little more focused. But I just, we just need some help. And I told my neighbors that I had asked for this and everybody's sort of excited again, but I don't, I know that you have, you know, Jeremy's request too. I didn't realize it was that large, but I do think these things work. And for five thousand dollars, it could be, you know, five fewer accidents. So, thank you, Jenna. So, so Anna, do you want to repeat what you said, or do you want me to say it in different words, or, you know, it, in in terms of it, this has been an issue for us if we others who have come to us with similar requests, how we decide on one street versus other streets, correct? Yeah, so um, I'll speak to this a bit and and I know that others might have their own experiences with it, but this is something that, you know, Janet, in hearing your story, I'm really glad that you got that first sign and that is so not how a process should work, right? Like it shouldn't work that someone knows the person who has happens to have a sign and they get to pick where it goes. And and I, to be clear, I'm not faulting what happened years ago, but I think that's what we're trying to avoid in figuring out what the system is. And at the same time, because we don't have the system yet, it's really frustrating for people trying to navigate a non-existent system. So I, I recognize kind of the catch 22 we're in. Um, and so I think one of the, one of the questions I have, and I'm happy to follow up with the chair of um, our town services and outreach committee is what their timeline is for creating one of the things that's on their carryover memo is to create a process for navigating these types of requests. Um, and, and I'm, I'm happy to reach out to ask what the status of that is, if that's something they're discussing or when they plan to discuss it, because I, my worry is that we, while we want to create avenues for, for resident requests, we also don't want to pr only privilege folks who know how to navigate those avenues. And so I think that this is the balance of how do we, you know, recognize where these signs are needed? Because like, I live, I mean, I live on Bay Road, like, this is it's it's insane you know and and i i feel you with the accidents in my yard taking down telephone poles into my yard like i i have been there and i know um that it's really frustrating and scary um and at the same time we want to make sure that we're we're doing this in a consistent way because speeding is an issue everywhere um and signs everywhere at some point are going to be become too too diluting right and so how do we make sure that we're doing this in a way that makes sense. Sorry, I'm starting to ramble and I'm trying to wrap it up, but yeah. I mean, I've actually heard the tact say this over and over again for years. And I, so I think the way to approach it is you can, you know, spend years formulating a system for prioritizing. I know the tech had all these things, or you could just say, we're going to buy two signs a year and just hand them out. And so if the tech had, you know, whatever they were doing five, seven years ago has resulted in virtually no traffic calming. I mean, so I think, you know, I, I understand the need for process and I'm, you know, I'm, you know, privilege is like Tom called up Scott and just said, can we have that temporary sign back? Um, and he happened to have a sign. And I, I, I don't think that's a great process, but it's better to have one sign than no signs anywhere and in the town. And so I think that, you know, you might just sit there and say, okay, let's buy, I mean, I actually think the school stuff sounds fantastic. It doesn't seem like a lot of money, but there is no process and there has been no process for 10 or 15 years. And I, you know, I kind of threw this in because I was just like, hey, maybe this will work, but, you know, there is no system. And then you could agonize over a process or you can just, you know, there's people that have been asking for traffic coming to start doing it. And so I was hoping people would just start doing it here. So. I hear you. And I, I think to be clear, part of the reason why TAC hasn't been able to do anything is because TAC doesn't actually have that authority. And that's why that's been the problem. And, and we're working on fixing that at a council level too, and in figuring out what 
how we create a uh, a group that actually does have authority to make those changes because that's been I think a frustration for folks on TAC too is they have the expertise but they're not authorized to do anything um, and so I think that is that is a, a a gap that we are trying to close as well um, and I I agree I think we can't do nothing while we create a process and that's why I'm not saying that this is a bad request or an inappropriate request at all I'm just saying I think it's another indication. Um, as well, that we need to get on this in terms of figuring out some consistency, um, because otherwise we're, we are missing, we're possibly missing areas that really could use it. Thanks. I'll stop now. So, so Anna, I see two more hands are up and I'm, I am conscious of time. Doug is here. So, um, and, and one thing everyone should know, this is something we can write a full par paragraph on in, in our report on a, you know, in terms of, of, of what we get confronted with, with when requests like this come, as well as what we think about the specific requests. So we don't have to make a decision at this moment. Sarah. Um, I hear Janet's frustration and I completely understand. I would say that process is only helpful if it exists. And if we want to give, <laughs> if we want process, maybe we need some deadlines. So one approach, it, for example, could be if, if, if this request granted this year is saying, we're putting it in next year. You know, you get, <laughs> you got a deadline, come up with your process for the future, but you know, this is what we're doing now. So. Jennifer. So I, I also agree a process is important, but I don't think we should not approve any requests while we're waiting for the process. Um, I think so. So that's one thing. The other, the second, my second comment is: Have we ever, or could we ask APD, like, what are the worst streets in the town in terms of speeding accidents, uh, and or where do you think these signs should go? It 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 occurs to me that like it sounds like they had a sign that was sitting around that they hadn't put out themselves somewhere, and that's why they were able to give it to, to Janet and your husband, which which seems a little odd to me but like maybe i don't know maybe they maybe they're not think they're they're not thinking of it that way i don't know but like or, or could we you know if we have these requests from both um Jeremy and Janet can we go to the APD and say this is the request what do you think and if they say yeah those streets are terrible even if they're not the absolute worst if they say yeah those are really problematic spots then we just do it while we're waiting for the process to be approved i've actually had many conversations with police officers often at two in the morning when there's a car accident in my front yard. And so I actually think that's an excellent idea because they're really on the front lines of this. And, um, you know, I don't want to put myself in front of Crocker Farm School where, you know, you want kids to be able to walk to school. I just know that this is a really dangerous street. And so I, you know, I know the police officers support it. I don't think Scott was just tossing it out to us because we had talked to him and I'm assuming he had talked to John Musanti but I do think that's a good idea because those guys know and women know too what's going on. And that that could be the priority thing instead of a complicated system of, you know, points and balancing and, you know, traffic because also accidents aren't all reported. Like I didn't report the accident on, you know, Christmas Eve when I was pushing these cheerful people out of a ditch, you know? So I think that's so, a good idea. Anna, can, can I ask that, is it possible for you to hold your comment and then Bring it back. It's 30 seconds. Okay. okay. I, I just wanted to note that it, it's more than just APD. And so I agree, Jennifer, that it's great to have a system, but what APD will want to do is a speed study um, because like Janet said, not all accidents are reported and APD is only patrolling the roads they patrol. And I absolutely was not, uh, I wanted to clarify, was not saying we should not consider Janet's request. I was um, saying more, more so what Kathy was that we need to be much more strong in our uh, statement that we need an actual process for these. Thank you. Thank you. And th thank you both um, very much. As you see, it it, it triggered a st strong response. Mm -hmm. So I think we can move on um, to Doug. Thank, thank you, you, Jeremy. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Appreciate it. Doug, uh, thank you all. Um, if I could ask, um, in the uh, attendees is Rupert Roy Clark, our facilities director, and, and I think he'll be better suited to kind of walk through the six things that we have. Um, I'll give a brief overview while. Okay, while so you want me to bring him all. You would like me to bring him all the way in, right? Yeah, if you would please. Um, sure. <clears throat> so we have some 
Uh, there's a couple of vehicles, uh, one for maintenance, one for uh, disabled student transportation. Uh, we have some you know, more quasi retune things with energy management uh, upgrades and exterior door replacement and a, a curtain for one of our stages. Uh, and then we have a master plan for energy uh, in, in one of our buildings. Uh, and so I'll, if, if Mr. Roy Clark's here, I'll ask him to kind of walk through those in a little more detail for you and, and talk about what the intent is behind each and and uh, and and then of course answer any questions you have. Rupert, welcome. Um, and, uh, and for people who haven't met Rupert, he's terrific. Um, <laughs> so welcome, Rupert. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, thank you, everyone, for having me in. Um, uh, can you all hear me? Okay, my sometimes my speaker is a little bit bad. Okay. Um, so as uh, as Doug mentioned, um, we have a few capital asks. There are six of them amounting to, I believe, $310,000. Um, and they sort of fall into three categories. We have a couple for Crocker Farm. Uh, one is an energy master plan. Um, Crocker Farm got a huge uh, rebuild, re gut and remodel of over 20 years ago. Uh, and so we are looking at <clears throat> the expected life of a lot of its uh, heating, cooling, ventilation, and energy plant um, needing replacement. And in order to do this in a mindful way and a, a sustainable way and a green way, uh, we need to do a study of, of how we can move away from fossil fuels, how we can improve comfort levels and air quality, uh, how we can um, um, how we should stagger the replacement of existing equipment. Uh, how do we prioritize? Uh, what, what's the best angle to work on? And the point of this study is to help us um, focus in on the most likely choices, the best choices, uh, so that then later we can pursue um, uh, fitable documents and design. Uh, but the first step is to just sort of get the overview of the building, and that's what this is. Uh, we've started doing some work on this with prior capital money, uh, but we will need to continue it. Um, and so that's that's the point of it. Um, um, if we don't do this master planning, I'm afraid that we will end up replacing equipment with identical equipment rather than um, going greener and more efficient uh, with newer technology. So uh, I think it's really a a good, wise uh, use of money, and it's important to try to get ahead of the curve before stuff starts failing, and we just sort of have to replace it as an emergency. Um, so that's for eighty thousand dollars. The other Crocker Farm ask is for the curtain on the stage. Um, stage curtains are a huge concern for uh, life safety and fire safety, um, and so they have to be treated and made safe, and they can only be treated so many times before. Uh, they have to be replaced. We're due to replace the curtain at the uh, on the stage uh, in the cafetorium, uh, and that is a request for fifty thousand uh, dollars. Do you want me to just blast through all these and then take questions? Uh, does Does that work for everyone to have them go through all of them? Yeah. Okay, I'm happy to provide more detail. If I'm giving too much detail, you can just roll your eyes up up into the back of your head, pass out, and I will stop talking. Um. So uh, the second section is vehicle replacement. Um, I was just doing some calculations earlier this afternoon. Um, our average maintenance vehicle is over 13 years old, the average age. Uh, the average age of our uh, pupil vans, not the school buses, is um, also 13. And um, we really like to replace these sooner um, but we've sort of fallen behind. It's been a challenge with all of the uh, supply chain stuff, um, just sort of slowing down the whole procurement process. Um, but we really do need to replace some of these vehicles so that we can keep them running and on the road uh, so that we can take care of the buildings and take care of the kids and get them where they need to go. So there are two requests there. Um, one is for a, a pupil van. This one would have a wheelchair lift for uh, people with mobility issues. Um, for $85,000. 
Uh, the other is for a maintenance van uh, for seventy thousand uh, dollars. We would prefer uh, to buy electric vehicles. Um, I think that we likely could provide uh, get an electric vehicle for the uh, maintenance van. Um, it's a little bit more difficult with the pupil van because of all of the um, required uh, upfitting that they have to do. They have to weld a bunch of stuff to the floors and that avoids uh, the warranty and they're afraid they're going to set the batteries on fire or damage them in some way. So th they're working, the industry is working on how to upfit uh, all electric vans uh, for 70 pupil transit. And if they manage to come up with a solution, that's the way we would prefer to go, provided we have enough money to do it. Uh, but otherwise, um, we really need reliable transportation for the kids and we would need to get a fossil fuel vehicle if we can't get an electric one because they're so old. Um, the third category is sort of district wide uh, overarching uh, asks. Um, one is uh, for our energy management system. Uh, this is something that's always ongoing. Uh, we have building management system that uh, controls heating, ventilation, air conditioning, cooling, lights. Um, um, it interacts with uh, our security systems and um, um, our alarm monitors. Uh, so uh, these systems are old. The hardware in them is old. Uh, and um, so we try to maintain them as best we can, but we need to replace some pricier items. We need to get some uh, new programming and new software. Uh, so there's a variety of things that we're doing to try to uh, upgrade this system. Uh, this year, the ask for that is uh, $15,000. And the final item is uh, exterior door replacement and repair um, for $10,000. Um, exterior doors are a significant part of the building envelope. And so when they fail, uh, we get issues with temperature, humidity, wasted energy, pests, uh, get, being able to get into the building. Um, and in some cases, um, uh, fire safety, if if uh, a um, if a door is too hard to open and you can't get out of it from the inside, uh, that's a serious issue. And so we want to be able to stay on top of those things and be extremely proactive. Uh, so that's an ask for uh, ten thousand dollars at this time. So those are the six. That's a quick quick view of the six. I'm happy to answer questions about any and all. Uh, and so I'll be quiet now. So I see Doug's hand is up. So Doug, um, we'll take you first. Yeah, just a couple of things that I'll add on 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 top of that. Um, you know, as as Mr. Roy Clark said, that you know we're trying to to go green wherever and, and whenever possible. So that's part of the the idea behind uh, electric vehicles and and an energy master plan. Um, the other thing you'll notice is the the two specific building requests are for Crocker Farm. So uh, as you well know, the the Fort River building project is getting ready to start literally later this month. Uh, and and we're excited about that, and that has a lot of you know, potential for for great things. But you know, we need to maintain and 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 uh, invest in the facility at Crocker Farm. We're going to need that building for a long time, and we want it to be a, a, a nice facility and a, and a highly functional facility for our students that will be going to school there. So that's part of the investment in in that uh, in that area. So I just want to mention those couple of things as as augmentative to to what Rupert just shared. So thank you. So, questions, Sarah. And do you want to go like project by project and deal with it all, or just one person at a time? Because I have I have a couple questions. Um, I I why don't you do your couple okay. and then, then we'll see whether, um, others have a couple or okay. want to talk about a separate one. Yeah. And, all right. And, and well, if people have already mentioned your question, we we. You know, we'll be efficient and just yeah. do yeah, specifics. This is um, a, a general question about any vehicles that aren't customized like this wheelchair ex uh, accessible van is. Is it cheaper to buy them and maintain them than to lease them? So that's one general question. And then about the cafetorium curtain replacement, I wonder, does the cafetorium have to have a curtain like this? I mean, is it, I, I don't know, is there an option just to take it down and not replace it or or that facility is is used in a way that does require a curtain? So I'll, 
that's really it. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, let me take the second one first. Um, curtains um, help with acoustics in an auditorium setting. So um, it does have a benefit aside from the aesthetic one uh, in terms of, of folks being able to hear clearly and reducing echoes. Um, it has a sound dampening uh, function um, during school lunch, which is very loud. Um, so there are a couple of reasons why I think it's a good idea to have. Um, I don't know that they use it a lot for theatrical events. It may be that um, uh, Doug Slaughter can answer that better, or, or I'm happy to um, to check with uh, uh, Principal Derek Shea and, and uh, get back to you folks on that question if you wish. Um, in terms of uh, general vehicle expense, we have um, a certified diesel uh, mechanic uh, on staff. We have to have that for our pupil transportation. Um, so um, it, it's a way for us to uh, leverage that and it reduces some of the costs of owning a vehicle by having someone like that on staff. I haven't done a, 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 a you know a dollars and cents study on lease versus own. Um, my sense is that um, when you own it, um, uh, you really uh, take good care of it and you drive it for longer. Um, so I'm inclined in that direction, but um, I'm, I don't know dollars and cents how that boils out. Um, do you want to jump in on either of those, Doug? No. Other people? Okay, I have a couple, Rupert. Um, on the vehicles, you said hopefully electric. Um, I would encourage if you can't get electric, maybe hybrid, because what the latest reports on some of the electric is the all-weather side of them, and in really cold weather, they don't work as well. Well, um, in terms of long lasting, so um, and and the numbers you put in are those best guesses for those, or did you have? Uh, and I, the reason I'm asking this for other people is, in a few cases, people had a pegged a number, and it turned out, oh my gosh, it's a whole lot more expensive than that. So, just are these um, based on, you know some minimal research on uh, you could probably get what you would need for that amount of money? Uh, I would say based on some minimal research. I don't have quotes. Obviously, it's hard to ask a lot of vendors to give you quotes when you're not ready to buy. Yeah. Um, the um, so, But what I did was I went to the state bid lists for vehicles um, and looked at what the um, pre-bids are for electric vans. Uh, and I looked at what uh, we've been paying for um, 70 upfits and um, and wheelchair lifts um, for that vehicle. For the other vehicle, um, I needed to put in uh, some extra money for all of the shelving and tool storage and ladder racks and things that you have to outfit in a van with to make it useful. Uh, so that would include uh, those accoutrements as well. Okay, and then my other question was on Crocker, the study. I have no issue with the amount you pegged him, but a year ago, we had um, a series of specifics for Crocker. So um, replacement windows, a uh, HVAC system, and those were all in theory going to be in FY25. Have, have, have you been rethinking this as a, I, I think that's what I understood you to say is you want a better total picture before you go into do the windows and then do the HVAC. Is, is that what I'm hearing? Because they were, I'm not encouraging you to put them back on the list given how high the total is here because those were expensive. Um, those for people who aren't staring at, you know, they were five hundred thousand dollars, four hundred, you know, a couple five hundred thousand dollar expenditures, um, you know, a million, a million dollars to Crocker, but it looked like we were gonna about to spend a big amount of money on Crocker. And I think what you're saying is you can wait and do this study. And then are we looking at in <laughs> FY 26 or 27, the, the, the big numbers. Is, is that, 
so you rethought the plan? Is that what had happened? What's happened? Yeah, I thought we should tap the brakes on on some of that, and also um, we're looking at potentially um, asking MSBA to join with us on a building envelope project. Uh, the age of the envelope is is we're not yet eligible, uh, but if we can uh, keep things going, uh, we may be able to leverage some state funding for not only uh, roof and windows, but also for HVAC. Um, uh, there's no guarantee that we would get that money, but um, uh, I'm thinking about that. I'm trying to put together some some preliminary documents, and that's another reason for this, this uh, um, master plan. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I think we are probably sitting on some capital funds. Um, uh, or have prior year capital asked that, that we haven't, that, that we're not in the right year yet. Uh, and I do want to try to put our ducks in a row and do this in the order that makes the most sense financially. So I, I see that Anna's hand is up, but it, I think that also means that you think what we have in the school will last at least a year or two years. You're not at the point where it's about to crash. <laughs> um, stuff breaks when you don't want it to. Um, um, I feel like, uh, I mean, we are, we are, um, we are seeing failures, increased failure rates. Uh, we do have some funds from prior year capital ass that uh, we're leveraging to make the smaller repairs while we make the master plan. So Anna, I see your hand up. So at the, this might be a completely ignorant question. At the rate that things are moving and changing and adapting, is 20 years actually a lifespan for this kind of plan? We, I mean, this it's it's advancing so fast. So I'm curious, and you're talking about starting to move on this soon and, and you know, qualifying for different MSBA re reimbursements. So it is 20 years, I mean, you wrote it. So I'm sure you, I, I believe you when you say 20 years, but I'm also curious how that accounts for changes. I mean, changes in the, in the technology and in the climate and in the needs. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we, we, we usually think about the whole building ha as having a 50 year lifespan without major renovation. Uh, but then components have much shorter lifespans. Uh, roofs are typically more like 25 to 30, uh, 25 being uh, the more cautious um, approach to avoid you know, uh, water damage. Um, uh, large equipment like chillers and air handlers and unit ventilators are more in the 20 to 25 year range as well. So those components there on a 50 year building, you expect to replace um, uh, at least once and sometimes twice. Um, that said, advances in technology and efficiency uh, could could lead you to want to uh, replace things sooner. Right. Uh, um, in our case, um, I think we're we're aiming at a sweet spot for a sort of uh, new generation of um, uh, heat pumps uh, and energy recovery. Um, there's been a lot of there, there was a bunch of breakthroughs 10, 15 years ago. We're seeing a lot of breakthroughs now. Uh, the the industry is still shaking out, so. Um, uh, so I think we're, we're, we're in a good place to take advantage of technology changes at this mid building life upgrade of some of its equipment. And then my that second answer your question. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I just, I was 20 years felt kind of arbitrary. And so you explaining how it factors in with the life of the different components makes sense. Um, it's not necessarily that the plan itself is perfectly situated for 20 years. It's that the components kind of the life, the life of the plan will last for that long. Um, my second question is how do you plan to coordinate with the town sustainability director on this project as you go forward with it? Um, so Stephanie and I have been in touch a lot around electric vehicles uh, and charging equipment. Um, we, um, 
I, I guess I don't know how to answer that question. Um, I, I don't have a specific plan for how to do it. Um, um, we try to keep each other in the loop for stuff that we're applying for when we're applying for a grant or this or that or the other thing. Um, it happens sometimes that things dovetail. For example, there was a, a, a PV feasibility study where the schools and the town went in together a couple of years ago, and that was very informative and useful. And I would look forward to that kind of collaboration again, but I don't have a specific plan. Okay. Yeah, I was just, I'm curious. I know that it's obviously there are different entities, but as the schools don't have a specific, to my knowledge, sustainability director, you know, and and you you kind of do it all in, in that sense, I think that it might be beneficial and um, would hope that that would be something that folks would consider is, is um, consulting with her expertise in developing RFPs and, and the like as you go forward. Um, that would be, if that's an option, I don't know how that functions in terms of that uh, working kind of across those lines, but. Yeah, and I, I would say that we're actually, um, you know, I think schools in town have, have worked together on um, other PV investments and um, also potentially uh, battery storage uh, systems. And we, we're looking at that and um, definitely input and support is, is very helpful and appreciated. Thanks. It's a town mission to reduce all of the emissions. So anything that we can uh, collaborate on is, is welcome. Thank you. So any other questions? You know, when um, when I, I assume that Stephanie is going to be, there is a, a piece of money just called sustainability in here. Um, you know, I'm not going to, what I'm going to say, it's not that I'm suggesting it, but if we get really tight for money on this year, part of that sustainability budget could go for this uh, revamping all of Crocker to be in a position for uh, getting us off fossil fuel, you know, just so it, it's a, when we, when we're looking at the different pieces uh, on a, I, I just don't know how we're going to get from 10 million down to four. Um, so I'm just thinking, you know, a couple of weeks from now, as we're, we're juggling this, not to say that that is a good idea or even one way to go, um, but we've used that money in the past to leverage getting grants, to leverage, you know, moving to the next step on big projects. So it's something that we could think about if it makes any sense and ask Stephanie about. Yeah, I, I hear you, Kathy. I think I worry about coming in with that assumption before we know what those sustainability improvements are, because my big question was, what are those? They're not as specified out as I think they will be when we hear from them. So I, I worry about cutting that particular line given our that's, priority that's, areas, but I hear what you're saying that you're not. That's why it. I said it was a comment rather than a suggestion as we're, we're looking at ways of getting this done. Any other questions on this? Um, you know, I, I do think it helps that we're not looking at a million dollar ask this year for Crocker. <laughs> so, so, so given everything else is, and, and this notion that MSBA has potentially opened up a pathway to revamping a building systems not just roofs um which they've been talking about that is uh very good news um it would be great if the state would think more generally about that or if Amherst College would say here's a good investment for Amherst College so in any case Rupert can I just also add uh, just for, so folks are aware, uh, MSBA uh, has an accelerated repair program uh, that you can use for windows and uh, doors and roofs. Um, they used to have one for boilers, and they are switching gears on the state level so that they're not going to do fossil fuel, fuel boilers through the MSBA. It's going to be uh, heat pumps um, and only heat pumps from what I'm hearing. So they are also going in the same direction, and I expect they would be supporting us when we're ready to do that as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I th I think we um, just went through the projects for today, and we have finished schools. So are there any other final questions or comments for Rupert and Doug? Um, before we say thank them very much and uh, let them leave us. 
No, so thank you very much. Thank you both very much. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Thanks for your time and for all the work you guys are doing. I know it's not easy. And and Sandy, I, th I think you have our list of, or at least Kathy's list and some of the others of uh, what, you know, to pro provide us a context when we come back together, when we start to get to some of these big ticket items. I mean, I find the tasks you've put before us quite daunting if we don't at least know um, what we're what, what we're trying to squeeze the big numbers down to um, right. you know, with some of this, it would be great. And one thing Rupert mentioned that was an innovation, and I don't know, given um, how things are being tracked, is we asked to take a look at any outstanding authorizations that hadn't been fully spent and whether some of that could be repurposed and brought back in. So he mentioned the schools had some money that they hadn't fully used. And we had this little chart, and I think Sonia set it up that to look three years backward, you know, that if we gave it more than three years ago and it hadn't been used, to ask what the status is. Is it is, are you about to use it? Or are you about to use all of it? Or if not, bring it in and we could use it for a similar purpose. So we didn't have to, you know, revote it, but you know, uh, and some of these pockets. So last couple years we found in the neighborhood of 75 to a hundred thousand dollars doing that. You know, so it wasn't just small, small amounts of money. So I, I thought it was a, a it was a good you know and I know Sarah when you were at CPA you were trying to figure out if you had awarded money five years ago and they didn't use it were they ever going to use it you know kind oh of. yeah they started clawing it back <laughs> <laughs> right yeah so 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 that's you know and we didn't get that till the very end because 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 people had to really you know scrub their books to say you know um, we're pretty sure we're not going to spend all of it because um, no one wants to give it back. Yes, um, I think that is uh, that's typically an important source of money. Um, and uh, again, I will check in with Holly and the extent that Sonia is still around, which she is, uh, about where we would stand with that. Um, I would also just mention that uh, these energy studies for schools, we did them in Arlington. We did a study of, I think, six different schools to see what it would cost to electrify them. And it came in at about $7 million, no, excuse me, upwards of $10 million each. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go back and try to figure out where the money came from to do that study, if it was grant money, because uh, I think some of it was, or some of it might've been ARPA money. Um, but I just want you to know that as we're looking at electrifying, which I think is a great idea, that, that at minimum is the, the kind of money that we're going to be looking at uh, per building. So just need to be mindful of putting in st study money uh, and the timing that might result from that when you actually undertake a project because uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of money. Um, if I could also just say, I think uh, I didn't respond specifically earlier to the issues with uh, uh, departments over these uh, traffic calming signs. And so I would just like to say, I think it would be very important to check in with police uh, and DPW, uh, particularly with police on their position on it. Um, I don't remember exactly what TAC does anymore. So, you know, the full range of its uh, its powers or its investigations, but I do think it is very typical in cities and towns that lots of people want traffic calming and uh, it gets to be a very contentious and difficult issue because anytime you do things on one street, it has impacts on others. And so it's not just that people like TAC are sitting around not getting things figured out, it's that uh, there are legitimate trade-offs that have to be undertaken. So um, I think definitely worthwhile I will pursue some of those inquiries with police and DPW and, and uh, report back. Thank you. Anna, I, I saw your hand go up, went up with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to note, we do have the chair of TAC who's, who's here if we sought more clarity, but I think in the meantime, I'm also able to just say that I know one of the, one of the things that the town manager is going to be bringing to the council 
um, and this has been talked about before, is the idea of bringing forward a commission versus a, the current committee structure so that they actually have some more power. Um, right now, I think that's been the biggest challenge TAC has had is that they don't have the, the um, authority to ask for changes. They can provide advice as they are asked for it, um, but they are not a, a body that has the authority to um, say that changes should, uh, to, to move changes forward. And I think that's part of the challenge there. Um, but yes, I agree, Sandy. Thank you. Are there any other committee comments or, you know, to-do lists or questions that we have of Sandy so we can hear back next time? If not, we, we have a member in the public. So I do want to give the member a chance to speak if they would like to. Um, so we're open for public comments, if that's okay with everyone. So we, as on a notice, Tracy is in the audience, but Tracy, we're not doing a command performance here. So if, if you would like to speak, uh, raise your hand otherwise. Um, yeah. Okay, I will allow you to talk. I, I had raised my hand. I don't know, somebody put down my hand, but I don't have the power. Um, so I was listening to the earlier conversation. I. We'll keep my comments very brief. TAC actually has a meeting that starts in three minutes. So I will be leaving promptly. Um, but I did want to say that um, the topic, you know, that Janet had brought up the idea that TAC over the years has like looked at developing a prioritization plan. And that is definitely true. Um, as I listened to your meeting tonight, I was actually putting together an email response on that. Um, before I even joined the TAC, um, TAC had created a subcommittee that was focused on doing that. In 2018, the Amherst Select Board adopted a complete streets policy, which is the first step in being part of the complete streets program for the state DOT and being eligible for funding. The second step is creating a prioritization plan and getting it approved by the state DOT. And then the third step, well, once you do tier two, the plan, then in tier three, once you have the completed plan, you're eligible for money. Um, so I was on the subcommittee and we, we met for, you know, months, years, um, to develop a criteria guidelines. And we did that. We submitted our, uh, draft proposal for this over three years ago and it like never moved forward. Um, at the time we were told that in order to complete the plan and get it approved by the state, we would need, there would need to be a professional consultant and an engineer involved. Um, the DPW had looked into hiring one and that was never done. But um, we did look extensively at it, you know, in terms of considering requests, in terms of other documents that the town has in place, including the master plan, the transportation plan, the bicycle and pedestrian network plan, and so on, looking at crash data, looking at vulnerable populations, like a whole bunch of criteria. So, I mean, a lot of that work has been done and it would really be great. Um, I mean, TAC has really been pushing for this for a while. It's really be great to see that that plan, a prioritization plan created and submitted to the state, um, which would one, give a framework for making these types of decisions on traffic calming and safety requests, but then also would make the town eligible for funding from the state to actually implement those. So, um, so th those are just my quick comments, but I'd be happy to talk more. And, and Tracy, just say your last name because no, I'm not sure everybody knows you. Yeah, so my name, um, I'm Tracy Zafian and I am the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee. And I first became involved with the committee. Well, actually I was involved with this subcommittee around 2018, right after the um, Complete Streets policy was adopted. And then I became an official member of TAC in 2019. Thank you. That's it. But thank you. And I'm gonna leave and go to TAC. And, and we, we follow the general policy that the council and other committees do that public comments, we, we listen to them, but we don't go back and forth, um, but we can always follow up and get information later if it's useful. So any other comments? We have our minute taker for today. So next week, um, someone, it would be nice for them to prepare. And Athena has put the updated agenda. We're basically meeting every week. Um, and 
you'll see the um, we'll I guess we'll hear uh, we'll do groups the way we did today groups of proposals that go together um, and I will send you the couple pages that I've mentioned that we had in the past just for a, fr for a frame of reference that you shouldn't consider those to be exactly the same numbers, except for the debt table. The debt table shows you the flow of funds where we've already committed them. <clears throat> so thank you. Thank you all. We, we managed to move. I see one more hand just went up. Jennifer. Um, so just we're, we're scheduled for every Thursday, four to six or, or in, until we're done. Is that right? So, yeah. I mean, it just, and it's only 5.30 now and we're, and we're, sounds like we're done. It just felt earlier, like we were concerned about time. And I feel like maybe people didn't fully get to say everything they wanted to say because we were concerned about time. But as it turns out, we've had, we have plenty of time. So I just wanted to point that out. Well, we were very efficient. So, but yeah, yeah we, you know, I, I'm watching the clock and I didn't, you know, originally the the Sandy and the staff presentation was scheduled for 45 minutes and we didn't spend nearly that amount of time. So we could we we could spend more on the resident proposals and more in schools. We may be more cramped depending on how many proposals we get next time. So I think it's excellent that people have pre-thought questions um, and picked out the way various people did on the schools that questions on a couple, you know, so that we don't have to have a discussion on everything. Yeah, Anna. It sounds like because we're also waiting on a little bit more information from Sandy and Sandy, thank you so much for, um, for getting that uh, together for us. I'm sure stepping into uh, these documents after a long time away must be a lot, um, but it looks like Kathy, we might need some more time in a future meeting to kind of make sure there aren't any follow-up questions based on, you had said, Sandy, you were going to get us like the vehicle list and a couple other things. Um, it might be helpful if we have time at a future meeting for for follow up questions, Kathy, or would you like us to email those to Sandy directly? Um, and are we allowed have, to do that? If you have follow up questions, it's fine to email them to Sandy. Please copy me with them um, okay. or, or go through me because then I can keep a collection of them. Um, or even better, maybe it's send them through me. So if three yeah. of you had the same question, Sandy doesn't have to. And then the answers would come to us as a committee rather than as individuals. So I think just go through me. Um, you know, what we were doing before was going through Sean and Sean could recognize when he had duplicates. But you've got so much on your plate, Sandy, I can shepherd them through. And it basically I'm just sending them on. I'm not going to I just want to keep a tally of them. Okay, Sarah, Sarah, I see that you have a quick question. Which which projects are we talking about next week? So I know what to. Um, meet. Library, town. It's the uh, facilities and public works. Thank you. So I, it's it's, it's listed on the agenda, but yeah, what, I just get to it right now. So no, that's know. okay. But what but what um will be useful is if if Theta tells me when it's been posted, we'll make sure to give you a signal because that typically it just gets dropped into the packet, and you have to remind yourself to go and look at it. Um, right. You know, rather than we're not sending out these these large documents to everyone. So you have to go and retrieve them, but it's always gonna be in that JCPC website under the day of the meeting. So is there anything else? I'm not rushing to close in case you were worried about that, Jennifer, but um, I also, uh, it's it's so rare we can end a meeting early. <laughs> <laughs> in my world anyway, that I'm I'm thrilled to be able to do that. We forgot something. Okay, thank you very much. And, and see everyone next week. Thank you. Hey, Kathy. Yes. I'll keep you on for one second. Or Jim, did you have something? Oh, you're just waiting for goodbye. Yeah, okay. I was just curious, at some point I'd like to know about the... Um, teaching you did around um, revenue and so forth? The, the teaching I did around rev. you mean in my prior life yeah. or in my- Kathy, oh, I, Kathy well, I, I don't know you which... might just want to stop the recording. Oh, stop oh, the recording. Stop, yeah. How do I stop? Oh, I can see. I, I can do it.